Today, I'm gonna to be taking a look at the brand new ELAC debut reference. I'm gonna be doing some measurements. I'm gonna compare them to some other ELAC speakers as well as putting them on the speaker leaderboard. And then at the very end, I'm gonna have a sound demo. And I wanna see, do these have the same magic as the previous Andrew Jones design speakers? Today's video is gonna be sponsored by Just Audio. They are gonna be giving away a pair of debut reference speakers. If you're looking to purchase these, they do have the debut reference in stock. They also have vintage gear that would pair beautifully with these speakers. If you wanna know which speakers and amplifiers work well together, give them a call and they'll be able to help you out. If you're in the Baltimore, Maryland area, they have a physical location. If you have home or pro audio gear that needs repair, they can do that as well. If you're not near them, you can shop online and you'll earn $10 rewards for every $100 spent. They also offer free shipping. Now I'm gonna to link to the contest down below. All the contest details will be on there. Make sure to check it out because there are multiple chances to win. So once again, thank you to Just Audio for sponsoring this video. So aside from the old TAD speakers that Andrew Jones designed, he has been known for providing a lot of value for the money. So I've had experience with the entire debut line, starting with the original debut series. The original debut series had a ton of bass, which a lot of people liked, including myself, but I did find that one to be a little bit dark. He changed all that with the Debut 2.0. The Debut 2.0 had a few changes, including a front ported design and some slight changes to the tweeter, and that made it brighter, but to me, I felt like there was some harshness on the top end. Now we have the Debut Reference, which looks completely different than the original two, much more refined, much more high-end, and there are some changes to the sound as well. Before we get into that, Let's take a quick look at the aesthetics. First, you'll notice the new front slotted port. Now, this is not just any port. This port actually is flared on both ends to reduce any sort of chuffing. On the one that I'm reviewing, it has a six and a half inch woofer and it has this ring around that woofer. I think it looks nice. Above that, you'll notice the one inch tweeter with a brand new waveguide and grill. The waveguide is there to produce a smoother off access response. On the side, you'll notice an all new wood veneer that actually has a pretty realistic texture to it. There are two color options. There's the white with what they're calling an oak veneer, and there's a dark theme option for the folks that like that with a black baffle and a walnut veneer. Let's take a quick look at the specs on this thing. These are 18 pounds each. Power handling is rated at 120 watts max. Sensitivity is 86 decibels. And the anechoic frequency response is rated from 44 hertz to 35 kilohertz. What you won't see are some of the changes to the internals. So the cabinet now has more internal bracing, which is always good. The stiffer the cabinet, the less resonance. They're also using a cast chassis woofer, which also leads to less resonance. So now let's get into some of my initial listening impressions. The first thing I noticed is that it has a very strong center image. Along with that was a very wide sweet spot. So what that tells me is that that waveguide is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Bass response was heavily dependent on where I placed it in the room, which is what you'd expect. I'm gonna make a whole separate video on that later on, so stay tuned for that. I almost forgot to mention the beautiful magnetic grill. It looks like some sort of heather gray tweed. Is that what that's called? I don't know, but it looks great and Andrew Jones recommends not using it for critical listening. You will notice that there is a slight spike around 10 kilohertz and a little bit below that as well. I did some stress testing on the woofers to see if I could get them to chuff and they passed that test easily. Now I can go on about my listening impressions of these, but so many people have already asked me, how do these compare to the ELAC Unify UB5s? So first of all, these are not a three-way concentric. These are a two-way with a six and a half inch and a one inch soft dome tweeter versus the Unify UB5s, which were a three-way concentric design with a five and a quarter woofer, a four inch mid-range and a one inch soft dome tweeter. So again, these are a larger woofer, six and a half versus five and a quarter. And these are Aramid fiber and the Unify UB5s were an aluminum cone driver. In my opinion, these have a much nicer finish than the Unify UB5s, just my opinion. To me, these have clear highs, they have more detail, and the mid-range is not as forward as the UB5s. Like I was saying, with regards to the bass, it was very room dependent, and as with any speaker. So the UB5s in my room seem to have more bass, and when I talked to Andrew Jones, he said, well, that really shouldn't be the case, the other ones typically measure as having more bass, but it really is the difference between the UB5 being rear ported versus these being 
front ported. One thing I did notice about that is that the UB5s changed more when I got them closer to the walls versus these. They changed, but they didn't change as drastically as the UB5s. The debut reference are slightly more sensitive, so they ended up sounding a little bit more dynamic to me as well. The debut reference also seemed to give me a better sense of depth and better instrument separation. I think a lot of that has to do with the brighter treble response. If you're looking for an affordable three-way design, well, the Unify UB5s are the ticket. If you're willing to pull these away from the wall, I think you'll find that they have excellent bass response. Also, it scales very well with better equipment. These do like a lot of power, so you're gonna need a nice amp with them. The ELAC debut reference, on the other hand, has a more modern design. It fits into any decor, and it doesn't need as much power to get it going. I've also found that these are more forgiving with regards to placement, so if you can't pull them away from the walls or have them towed in optimally, well, they're gonna sound better than equivalent speakers. And I think that's the genius of Andrew Jones. Not only does he know how to design great speakers, but he also understands that not everybody can place their speakers in perfect places and these accommodate those scenarios. So let me go ahead and put these on the speaker leaderboard and see where they place. All right, so here we are at the speaker leaderboard and we're taking a look at the ELAC debut reference. Now this fits in a few different categories. So let's take a look at best bookshelf. So right here we have the 85th anniversary, we have the ELAC, Navis, ARB51s, SVS Ultra Bookshelf, and then the UB5. So best bookshelf speaker, hmm, this is so tough. Um, are they better than the UB5? I think that's gonna really depend on whether you like detail or whether you prefer that concentric design and what that offers. Right. I like the mid range on the UB5s a little bit better, but I like the top end detail of the debut reference and the looks of the debut reference a little bit more. Oh, man, this is really tough. I'll, I'll, mm, I'll give it the edge just because of the new design, the front port, and how it's more versatile in most scenarios. So, congratulations, debut reference. You beat the bigger brother. Best for desktop, this is not really a good scenario just because these are these are too big for a desk. I mean, it's just straight up for a desk. Which one? I don't think they're these are made for a desk. I don't think Andrew Jones designed these for a desk. But if I had to play some, I'm going to go ahead and put them right here above the UB5s because the UB5s with that concentric driver are really, really designed for, you know, being heard at a distance. So... They don't sound great near field. All right, so these come in right now at $599. So I'm going to have to go ahead and put these over here in the best under 1000 category. And where do they place for me? Are they better than the Denton 85th anniversary? Mm, not for me as far as fit and finish. As far as the SVS Ultra bookshelf, those were very good. But I felt like they needed a little bit of help in the base department. Um... Those had a great finish as well. That's tough. Hmm. That is a tough one. I think if you want home theater, you might put the SVS Ultra Bookshelf speakers above the debut reference for two channel. I prefer the debut reference. And finally, best overall sound regardless of price. We have the Denton 85th Anniversary, which are my favorite still. The ELAC uh, ARB51s, they're powered active speakers and then we have the svs ultra bookshelf and the elac ub5 again the ub5s to me had more bass in my room but that is again very room dependent these are more expensive i'm gonna have to say best overall sound regardless of price i'm gonna have to put them right here above the ultra bookshelf boom there it is so there you have it if you agree or disagree with my placement leave it in the comments below. So that's it. If you liked the video, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos, and stay to the very end if you want to hear the sound demo. Hard working every day I'm stressed out 24 7 babe No, no time out Wish we could fly away Special memories together. I'll be a company now and forever. I say we fly away, you and me. Go to our favorite place. Feeling the sun on my 
Thank you to my Patreon supporters. Thank you for supporting me and allowing me to do what I love to do here on YouTube. If you're not already a patron, check it out at patreon.com forward slash Joe Anyway, that's it. Take care. Bye-bye.